What's up guys, Metal Sharp TV here. I am uh, at the Brutal SO 2016 and I'm sitting here with Ben from Parkway Drive. How's it going? How are you doing? Yeah, very good, happy to be here. How are you enjoying this lovely place? Yeah, it's amazing. It's one of the most unique places we've ever played for a festival. It's like a full castle. And we walked around the walls before. It's the kind of place that I'd, I'd be visiting even if there wasn't a festival. I love this old historic stuff, so it's cool. Can't wait to play. And how are you enjoying the weather so far? Because I know you are from Australia. You've got also your surfing season there. <laughs> and uh, now you're here. It must be a bit uh, shock. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. Like I uh, heard yesterday was raining all day t and today was mostly sunny. We, um, we got a, a taxi to this big lake like about 15 minutes away because I know if we can't swim in one day it doesn't feel complete so we went there and we went for a big swim in this lake it was actually nice the sun came out and we saw some guys fishing in the lake it was good uh, I guess you must be enjoying this uh, festival around because your band is like made for the festivals you know yes. big hooks uh, anthemic uh, great riffing crazy mosh pits so are you looking forward to, to the show? Yeah, for sure. Actually, it's funny you say that because a few years ago when we first started to play the festivals, maybe like five years ago or so, just before we recorded Atlas, we kind of realized that we love playing big festivals and big shows and we started writing songs for the, the, the festival atmosphere, particularly Aya. Like basically we'd write a song and we'd think, what would go down really good at festivals? We, you want, we want the fans to sing along, we want them to to be able to move, to dance and have fun and we would tailor make the songs for that and in, with that mindset we actually would come up with different parts that we wouldn't usually you know, think of beforehand so it's actually like having particularly this new album and our newer stuff it's um, yeah like you said it's kind of tailor made for festivals and it works really good we love playing the big, those big shows. Uh, well speaking of big shows you are one of the headliners yeah. of this whole thing. So after all those years, I was still a bit nervous b before such a show? No, not really. It, just anxious? No, not really. <laughs> just, no? <laughs> just excited. Yeah? Yeah, it, we don't really get very... Uh, me personally, I don't really get nervous anymore. Just because we're so comfortable. Uh, we can play the songs. We've played them that many times and we know everything. It's, it's, you're not really... Don't get nervous when you're prepared and when you're confident. And, um, yeah, it's just more excited. We're excited to just to play and see the crowd, and I guess the more the crowd, the more energy the crowd gives us, the more we'll be able to put back, and the better the show will be. So yeah, it's just fun. Uh, like I said, I think you are a perfect uh, concert or a festival band. So has it ever happened to you that the crowd wasn't really into it? Yeah, we've definitely had yeah. shows, particularly in in like smaller countries that we don't really go to very often and there's the odd country that that we're not as big at like uh, I won't really I won't name the countries but um <laughs> but yeah sometimes you're expecting it to be crazy and it's not as big or sometimes like if it, if it starts raining heavily and um the other day at Wacken we played Wacken for the first time which is one of the biggest ones and it was it was amazing but we played it was a it's a four-day festival and we played on the fourth day, at the very, we were the very last band of the festival. We played at 12:40 a.m. on the last day. It's been raining the whole time. There was like this much mud, and the people out there were just like just so tired because they've been watching bands for four days straight. And it was still good, but we could tell that the energy wasn't as much as it would have been at the start. And you know, I felt sorry for the people out there because they've been out there for four days and some of them said they were waiting for days to see us and you know, it's just, it kind of depends on the weather and your slot as well as, um, as, well as the, the day, so yeah, it depends. Yeah, well, let's talk about your latest record. Um, what I think about it is that you've changed maybe a bit of in a direction. Was that intentional? or was that like you went to the studio and it just happened organically? No, it was definitely intentional. Basically, when we started writing a few years before the album, we started writing for it. And me and Jeff, who are the main music writers, we just didn't feel um, passionate about writing the same stuff. Our yeah. other four albums are pretty similar in style. And we started writing and we just were like, we weren't feeling it. And we just kind of, um, cre creatively, we just wanted to 
challenge ourselves and do something different and we we talked to Winston about the idea of doing something different and he actually was thinking the same thing when you've been doing when you've been a band for 10 years writing this similar stuff it's just you want more of a challenge so we we started thinking of different avenues and um, Winston we wanted him to start exploring more avenues with singing like not singing singing but just more dynamics with his vocals because the other four albums were just super heavy the whole time which is pretty limited with the stuff you can do so basically we just we just said let's just let's just not have any rules let's let's not have any guidelines let's just write what we want to write and we kind of experimented a bit more and we're a bit more open and, and yeah and higher is the result and we're real happy with it uh, I guess there's no uh, reason to recreate one album exactly, all yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah, and I also know that uh, that the Ayer was uh, number one in Australia. Yeah, yeah. So how does it feel to be like the most popular band in your country? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say we're the most popular band in the country, but we well, at least for one week. For one week we were. Yeah, um, yeah. Australia is great. Obviously, that's where we're from, and we've been. Um, doing well there for you know, over 10 years now We've, when we first started touring we were kind of one of the first heavy bands to kind of break out of Australia and go overseas and people seem to have a bit of a national national pride with us which we love as well we love touring there and yeah it feels feels really good yeah and the interesting thing about Australia is that well it seems to me that every time uh, uh, like a bigger metal band releases a new record like I don't know Disturbed or you or anyone it's just it's just number one there <laughs> so what is it about Australia yeah, I don't know there's lots of um, people that like heavy music there I don't know I don't know is there know something why. in the water or something <laughs> I'm not sure but yeah people always seem to like it there's a, there's a really good radio station called Triple J who's like one of the most biggest um, radio stations in the country and they play they're great they play a lot of heavy music like all us and another big band from Australia Amity Affliction, In Hearts Wake, North Lane like they play them us all the time and regular hours and all rotations and lot, as well as hip-hop and stuff so I think that's got a bit to do with it and I don't know we just people like heavy music in Australia it's great. <laughs> Um, your latest video is for the track uh, Devil's Calling yeah. um, and it's not the part of the original album it's a, in a deluxe, deluxe edition and it's so it's a bonus track yeah. so have you released that track with the video so that people know that the bonus tracks are as important as the other tracks mm. or is it uh, for a promotion of the deluxe edition um, a bit of both basically we um, when I have finished we we still had some material and we still were feeling creative and we wanted to basically keep writing we didn't want to wait until two or three years until the next record so we had the idea to do the deluxe and we we, we wrote devil's calling and we really liked it and we thought it was worthy of a video we didn't we didn't want to put all the effort into writing these songs and recording them and then have them kind of just go unnoticed so we thought having a video would help get them I mean more publicity and get them out there and so we, we shot that video which was fun we had the same director who did the vice grip video and um, yeah it was cool and yeah this I, I like the song I like the video and I'm pretty happy with it yeah so right now I think it's uh, one year after the release of the last album so how are you looking back at that one year uh, are you like are you right now are you satisfied with everything you've done on that record and the tour cycle yeah yeah 100% and it's pretty crazy that it's been a year already it feels like it's been two months <laughs> yeah we've we've um we've done we've toured the world in Iowa we've done Australia Europe twice now and America and yeah that's so far this uh, the songs off Iowa have been the biggest we play in our set now that they get the biggest response so that's usually the best indication that it's a, it was a successful album and yeah we I'm totally personally really satisfied and content with that album and I think that we we put everything into it and I, I've liked it from the start and I'm glad that it's had a really good response it has been some negative response but that, that's always the case the bigger you get the, and it's particularly when you do something different there's always negative negativity but the most important thing for me 
is that we like it. Like I don't particular. We don't really particularly write music for other people to like. We. I mean that's a bonus, but we write music that we want to make and we want to write. And if we like it, then that's all that really matters because we're not really doing it to impress people, if you know what I mean. So I loved the album when we recorded it. I still like it now. So that's all that matters to me. Um, when I listen to it, I feel like, of course, it's still you, but I hear there a lot of your influences, mm -hmm. maybe from your early age, yeah. like something from the 80s, maybe some Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, do you want to keep in this in this style? Uh, and are you already planning maybe another album? Yeah, we've been talking about it. Like we're the kind of band that it, we take a long time to write. We don't just sit in a room and two months later an album comes out. It takes us like a couple years slowly to write. So we have been thinking and talking about it. We've got a few ideas and stuff in the works. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I think we're gonna. I oh, know we we don't like having rules and guidelines and saying we're going to write exactly like this and it has to be like this. We just kind of like writing and if we if we think it's good then we'll we'll pursue it and we'll we'll release it basically. So I think we're going to keep experimenting. Um, we're not going to as far as I know things can change but we're not going to go too far. We're just going to the main thing is for us we It's gonna. We like keeping it heavy. We like making heavy music, and we like making it energetic. And it, the the hundred percent most important thing is it's got to be good live. So it's a, we're the kind of we're a live band. That's where we we started, and that's what we enjoy doing is touring. So as long as the songs are going to be good, like energetic and engaging live, then that's the main thing for us. So I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. Uh, when I look at the lyrics of your last album. Uh, I feel like it's a commentary of some social stuff and some politics. Would you call yourself a politic band or something like that? Um, I don't think we're a political band in the strong sense of the word. We're kind of probably more an environmental environmentalist band. Um, we do have strong views in certain political environmental aspects. That's one thing that us as a band collectively agree on very strongly is We do really care about the planet and and the the globe and and it basically not getting destroyed by you know there's so many things going on basically that are um, enough to make you disenchanted with the whole political system of people you know destroying the the, the environment and the greed and basically putting humans first before the planet and other animals it basically it really makes me personally and the rest of the band feel impassioned to write music and to get a message out there and I personally Winston writes all the lyrics but I really like it when it's something I can relate to as well like a lot of the songs are personal for him which is which is great and but some of the songs like um, well, Dark Days or Destroy like that are about environmental issues I actually feel more in passion playing them because I know the message is something I really believe in so I, yeah we kind of he usually writes about he writes all the lyrics but a lot of the time we we give him like, discuss it we discuss what it should be about and he will he's just a really good lyricist sometimes I'll, if I watch a documentary or something that I really feel strongly about I'll send him a link and say watch this and write a song about it and then he'll he'll come up with something really good that I better than I could do so it's good so there won't be any Donald Trump songs on next record <laughs> there might be some anti Donald Trump Donald Trump songs yeah? but <laughs> so oh yeah we'll see it depends if he gets elected or not <laughs> I'm looking forward to it okay so the last question let me kill Mr. Play this festival and since he passed away and he's got here his memorial place Um, I ask every musician that is here uh, if you met the guy. Have you met the guy? Yeah, oh, kind of. Yeah, we met him once. Yeah. So, do you have any special story about him or anything? Um, our story of meeting him is not very special. We were at catering at a festival, and he walked past, and he actually. We don't like being the band that that hassles, you know, big other band, other rock stars or whatever. But he actually came up to us and and said, "How's it going?" And shook our hands, and we thought he was really nice guy because obviously he's very famous and well known and we just kind of we saw him we're like that's Lemmy we'll just you know leave him be and he came up and said hey guys and shook our hands and we're like oh we just had a look 
quick conversation, but we just thought that's a real nice, genuine guy. So that's that's basically the only time we met him. Yeah, but yeah, he's true a legend. True legend, yeah. It's so very sad about him. Okay, so okay. Thank you very Isn't much it? for the interview. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Ben Parkway Drive. <laughs>